Mr. P's Science and Math Podcasts. For more science and math concepts, search me out on iTunes by typing Papa Podcasts. You can contact me at Mr. P. Lieberman at gmail.com. Thank you for watching. Step by step process to completing the square. In uh, one of the other previous lessons that we tried to cover completing the squares, it got a little messy. And if you understood that, great. If not, I'm going to show you guys a much cleaner and word for word, step by step um, process on completing the square. Okay? Completing the square. Reason for completing the square is so we can identify the valuable information from our quadratic function. So what we're going to be doing is trying to convert from standard form to vertex form. And if we notice here, we can't obtain any information from here as we can from here, here, and here. And that's one of the reasons why we are going to use what we call completing the square to convert from standard form to vertex form. So completing the square, we've learned that the easiest way to graph quadratic functions is to write our function in the vertex form, which is y is equal to ax minus h squared plus k. Why? It allows us to find all this information. Okay, just to recap, the vertex, the opposite of that value, which will represent our, k, our x value, and then this will represent our k value. The axis of symmetry can be extracted by grabbing whatever our h value is from our vertex. And it's pretty much the location where we can place a mirror to find the exact reflection of our parabola on both sides. Our pattern is extracted from our a value. So our, whatever our a value is, we're going to multiply that a value by 1, 3, 5. And this pattern is what allows us to graph our parabolas a lot simpler from our vertex. The opening, pretty much, okay, um, if uh, a is a positive value, parabola opens up. If A is a negative value, the parabola opens down, okay? Now, if A is positive, the parabola opens upwards, we have a minimum value. If A is negative, our parabola opens downward, and we have a maximum value. Okay, so if it's positive, minimum. If it's negative, we have a maximum. And that value can be extracted by taking our k from it. Okay? So our y would equal to whatever our k value is. Now, in terms of the range, again, we're looking at it in terms of if it's maximum or minimum. If we have a minimum value, y okay, is greater than and equal to whatever our k value, okay, and that's if a is positive and we have a minimum value. We have y is going to be everything less than and equal to whatever our k value is if a is equal to a negative, okay. So that just recaps pretty much what we can extract from the vertex form. Steps to completing the square. Step one, here's our um, equation in what we call standard form. Okay. Standard form is anything that's in the form of y is equal to ax squared plus a bx plus some kind of c constant. So, first step, group the values of x together and leave the constant aside until the very end. So what we're going to do is we are going to pretty much group our x's and put that plus 5 off to the side and not worry about it till the very end. Okay. So now let's take this last part here, 
Okay, this will be our step two. Now, from our step two, and this step is not, will not always be there. Okay, and this step says factor our a value in front of the x squared and do the same, um, well, it's supposed to say for the x value as well. So what we're going to do is the value that is in front of this x squared is going to be our a value. So what we're going to factor out from here, okay, what we're going to factor out from here is really whatever value is in front of the x squared. So we're going to factor out a 2, but if we factor out a 2 from here, we also have to factor out our 2 from here. But again, this plus 5, we move it off to the side. Remember, we're going to ignore that until the very, very end. And so you're pretty much, the next step should look like the follows. Okay, two has been factored out from the x squared. So within brackets, now we're left with x squared minus 6x. And again, as we said, the plus five, we're going to ignore that. Okay, this step will not be required if there is no a value, such as in the example, y is equal to x squared plus 10x minus seven. Notice here, the a value is a 1. So we don't need to factor out if we had something like this. So if you come across a, an equation that's in standard form that has no value, or the, the value of the a is actually 1, you will skip this step. Okay? You will skip this step and just continue with step 3. So step 2 will be ignored if there is no a value. So... Here we have, or we do have an A value with this one, and we've already factored it out in step two. Step three now tells us complete the square by dividing the number in front of x by two and then squaring it. So we're gonna take that value, we're gonna divide it by two and square it. So the value, okay, is a six. We're gonna divide it by two and we get three. Once we get that value then, then, okay, we're going to square that answer. So 3 to the power of 2 is going to give us 9. So, step 4. Okay, this is what we've done in the, in the previous step. We've taken the x value, value in front of x, okay, we've divided it by 2 to give us 3, and then we've squared it to give us 9. And so what we're going to do with that is we're gonna do the following. We're gonna use the value found in step three, add it, okay, to the grouped terms, okay, add it to this set of grouped terms, and then subtract it, okay? So what we're gonna do is we are going to add to this a plus nine minus nine. So here's what we have, our original statement, and then this is what we're going to be adding to it. And again, let's not forget the plus 5. So notice here, this is this step right here. Okay, so we've taken this value, we've divided it by 2, okay, and then we've squared it to give us the value 9. So what we do is we add this plus 9 minus 9 because in reality, if we were to solve this, we get zero. So we're not really changing the real value of the equation. Okay? So the equation goes back to the way it was normally. But we add this because this is a step that we must, must include. So please don't forget it. And if you don't understand what it is, all you got to do is remember that you have to do it in order to do the next steps. 